All right, here we go. We are live. Build it through culture live, everybody. Welcome to the show. Your episode, I don't know what it is. This is episode 11 of Build It Through Culture Live. And we are so glad to come to you guys. Right. Um, just we are two live. people, two laptops, just riffing and ranting and whatever else we come up with. So um, we ask that you please. If you're participating in this, please participate. Be interactive. This is a good time. We want people commenting in the chat. So come on here and uh, make sure you're coming. You can dance. You can sing. You can do whatever you want. And uh, I am Rob Genovese. I am the owner of Unleash My Beast brand. We're a branding company, brand strategy company. I am also with Master Networks, a regional director of New Jersey, as well as area director for New York and Rockland County. And my counterpart, Steph, here is going to introduce herself. Hey, everybody. So glad you're here tonight. Um, I am Stephanie Bellafato. I am the Carmel Chapter President of Master Networks. I am Stephanie As well as... Um... Oh, my goodness. You there? Are you there? Hey, I'm here. You there? Okay, so <laughs> I don't know what just happened, but... Um, so I'm the Carmel chapter president as well as an area director in the New York, Connecticut region. And, um, we're so glad you're here with us tonight. So, um, shout out and let us know who, who's here and from what state you live. All right. Welcome, Sandra. Good to see you. Beautiful people. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, Sandra. Coming from one beautiful person to, I guess, a couple others. <laughs> Good to have you, Sandra. Thanks for coming. Oh, I didn't nope. tell my company, did I? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So we're going to be so, talking about something special today. Um, you want to talk about that bit, Steph? Um, what we're going to talk about? I don't know. I want to see if people could guess. Should we see if people could guess what we're sure. going to talk about? Absolutely. Um, or should we just tell them, Rob? Hey, Crystal. How hey, you doing? Crystal. Good to see you, Crystal. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, we should tell them. I mean, we they know. Them. Look, if they saw the um, the promotion come out. You know, um, around this whole thing, they probably know, and I think that's what um, what Rachel had done last time. She had looked at the uh, the promotional thing. That's how she knew what we were talking about because nobody could have guessed we were talking about DEI. Right. So if you're paying attention to our stuff, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, Alicia. Oh, Alicia. Hello. From Providence. Alicia. Coming all the way from Providence. Yeah, Alicia is in the Brooklyn chapter. Ooh, right. Barry's nice. in the house. Howdy, Woo Barry. Howdy, Barry. All right, guys, doing? we are talking tonight. About hey, ready? Are you ready? Inspiration. Yeah, there we go. Why inspiration? Why is that? What what do we what were we talking about when we came up with this one? Because you know, just so you guys know, Steph and I rehearse nothing. So, and I know you're probably like, you know, I can tell because you guys are just sometimes are talking about nothing. Uh -huh. But you know, what we talk about is we always talk about culture, and it always goes off into some direction that leads us to something that contributes to the culture that we're building in our businesses, in our networking chapters, uh, in our families. And so this one came up for some reason. I don't know why. Do you remember? You know, because I because it it's Women's History Month this month, right? Awesome. So yeah. awesome to all you women out there. <clears throat> kudos. You guys are rocking it. Um, and what inspires you? Like, listen you know, culture inspires us, right? Like we're, we're always inspired to, to see culture in our community, in our family, in our networking group. But yeah. what inspires all of you? Yeah, I, had, I was having a conversation with somebody uh, just yesterday and we were talking about uh, building the culture and building the culture in Master Networks. And, you know, as far as people, different leaders throughout the region, throughout the country, Everybody has a little different approach, a little different style. You know, regional partner Tina Campbell, she has a little different style. I have a little different style. You have a different style. You you build your chapter. And, and now as area director, building chapters, I should say. But, you know, we have a different style. And and somebody was saying to me, like, what are the words that you say when you're inviting somebody to a chapter? Like, what, we're thinking of changing the words. Now, look, as a branding guy, Words is part of my business. You know, we're we're describing the ideal client. We're describing the words that you use that accentuate and amplify your brand. So words are important. But I was like, you know, I don't think I've ever thought about the words I use to invite somebody to a chapter meeting. I just, I was just like, 
I had to think about it for a second. And I guess my approach is more just inspirational. I just, I like to inspire and motivate people to say whatever the heck they say. Cause honestly, you know, people bring people, I don't know what they say. I've never coached anybody. They just, they say something, people come, I guess they're excited. <laughs> You're muted there, Steph. I can't hear you. What happened? You're muted. Oh, I don't know why, what I did. Um, okay, so I, I guess I muted myself and I didn't realize that I'm telling my own self to be quiet. But Hey, Chris. <laughs> hey, Chris. Oh, my God. Chris made some amazing ribs the other day and posted it. And I told him I could smell them. He lives not far from me. I was like, I could smell them from over here. <laughs> Chris, we want the rib. We want the rib recipe. We hey, want Anna. The ribs. <laughs> hey, Anna. So, you know, um, listen, we talk about it's like opportunity is like a huge word that we use all the time. Right, Rob? Like, you know, um, all the opportunity. And I think experience, like when we invite somebody, we want them to to have the experience. It's not just like, oh, come to my networking meeting, right? Because yeah. oftentimes you hear people say like, oh, is it is it another one of those kinds of meetings? Like, uh, like, yeah. <laughs> like. Well, that's what they think right away. They're like meeting, like the whole word meeting just yeah. inspires nothing. <laughs> right, right, right. It's like. Um, how about um, an experience? How about we provide you this fun, great experience? And then you tell us what you got from it. Yeah. I mean, I had one guy say to me, I said, you know, what do you, what do you say to people? He invites people and they come. He goes, I just say, hey, you want to meet some great business people? <laughs> come to my chapter meeting. And they I come. See. So right. I think whatever it is, you know, because everybody's different, right? If I use his words it probably won't come out right. So I use my words whenever I'm, you know, inviting somebody somewhere. Um, I say things like, man, we got something really great going on. I'd love to introduce you to some people. You know, I'd, I'd love to have you as a guest. Sometimes I say that, but I don't think it matters. Look what like Jean says. She says, I do something great on Thursday morning. You have to come with me. So yeah. Like curiosity. What is she doing? Right. You know, actually, I was having a conversation with a connection that a couple of master networks people made for me um, today. And, and he's a, he's a new business, right? And he's a new property management company that he's opening. And in my conversation with him, I was like, Hey, you know, what can I do to help you? And, and, and then I said, um, he's like, well, I said, Hey, are you in any networking groups? Has anybody invited you to come and check out master networks? And he was like, no. I said, really? I said, well, let me invite you to come and check out, especially because he lives in an area that he's going to be moving um, more towards my area. So I said, well, come on Wednesday night. And, and, you know, you have the ability to get to know people, not just across the region, but across the country and give him what you do. And he has multiple businesses. I'm like, it sounds like this would be a great fit for you. And he was like, thank you so much. And I was. Yeah, I like to think of it like, you know, anytime you you want to inspire people to do something, because, you know, I, I heard somebody say one time <clears throat> they got so tired of a, a certain type of business. because It was very people oriented and he got tired of trying to get people to do things that, you know, and I thought, what do you mean get people to do things? I've never tried to get anybody to do anything. Right. I've always you know, sought to inspire and motivate. And so the way, you know, I view inspiration is I paint a picture of the thing that I would like them to see, or maybe the thing that I know they're looking for. And when it comes to master networks, it's, it's easy. We paint that picture of, you know, it's not like the networking that you're soured on. You know, there's lots of energy and, you know, we can paint the picture of, you know, come, we're lighthearted. It's, it's come as you are. We're casual. We're going to laugh. It's not all business. And when I talk about that, that's like, what? Yeah. That's they get the so is. shocked. Right. Wow. Yeah. Hello, but it's Campbell. Hey, Tina. Comes in with a so, wave. Hey, guys, you know what? Hey, I would like to ask all of you that are watching right now. What, what is your way? Like Jean shared that she just says, I, I do something great on Thursday mornings. You have to come with me. What do all of you do to invite people? I, I'm just curious. Now, now that now that we 
kind of went with that. Let's just see. How do you invite people? What is it that you say to people to inspire them to come and visit a meeting of master networks? Yeah. I mean, everybody, like we said, everybody has a different style. And, you know, when we talk about inspiration. A lot of times we, we find inspiration in other people's stories. And uh, by the way, we got a very great surprise guest. Everybody should be pretty inspiring. So make sure that you are sharing this to your page because you want to bring people to hear this special guest, a surprise guest, because I'm telling you, talk about inspiration. So we look at other people's stories and we feel inspired. Yeah. Right? Oh, I love hearing stories. So inspirational. The story of the, the, the Olympic athlete who, you know, m- you know, maybe went through some physical trauma and overcame and won things like that. And we feel inspired to do something that maybe we didn't think we could do before. And yeah. that's the power of inspiration. It's, it's showing somebody, Hey, look, it can be done. Whatever it is you think can't be done, it can be done. Right. You're only limited by your own beliefs, right? I mean, really, that's yeah. it, it's uh, it's so true. You, you limit. We all limit ourselves. We all, you know, and it's all that that bad self talk that we tell ourselves, like, yeah. no, no, don't do that. You, you know, and yeah. and getting over that, right? So, if, if you, you have know. any trouble with with what you're telling yourself. Danielle Jakes is a, a brand new member of the Mid Rockland chapter. Welcome, Danielle. Thank you Danielle, for coming. Woo-hoo. I've been thinking about friends that would enjoy it, though. Well, that's fine. You, you think about friends, and you know you do it in your own time. But Danielle, she is in the custom sign business. She creates. I know. I signage. saw. Beautiful, beautiful. Who like was it? inspirational. You want to hang these in your home because you wake up and you read them, and they're beautiful works of art. And it, you know, again, these are things that can help inspire you to. Maybe you think you're not going to have a good day because, you know, um, the, the, the garbage men tossed your trash all over the place and the dog peed on the rug and you, right, know, and right. you burned your breakfast. <laughs> yeah. or you think automatically it's a bad day, but then you read something that she's created and you're like, oh, man, OK. Maybe yeah, Danielle, right. I got to tell you, I'm going to have to have a face to face with you because everybody that knows me knows that all around my house there are signs. Right. I have signs that, you know, say. Friends are the family we find along the way. You know, good friends are like stars. You can't always see them, but you know they're always there. And, yeah. you know, um, several, several. So, you know, those are just a few, but um, yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Maggie says, new visitor came to Gold Coast City, loved the feeling of the meeting. He felt welcomed. Boy, there, there's that's something different right there, right? Hey, they felt welcomed. You know, that's kind of at the, the core of everything we do is always making people feel welcomed. And yeah, it, it is inspirational because when you go somewhere where you're appreciated and welcome, it inspires you to bring your best, to bring your A game, to to not be. Sometimes we get into rooms where the mood is down and we're like thermometers and we adjust ourselves to the mood of the room. And so yeah, we're not our best the room. You got to pump up the room. Up the room. You got to bring it. Wherever you go, you Absolutely. need to bring it. You need to bring you. So that's Google right. Me. Thank you. Thank that's you. That's right. For Here's sure. What Sandra says. Come check out my networking family. We're not like the transaction groups. We're heart-centered. Like oh, I love that, Sandra. Because it's Sandra. so true, right? Like, you know, uh, we, t- Rob, you and I talk about it all the time. Um, it, it always goes back to how you make people feel and caring about how, what they care about, right? And of course, you know, hey, Sammy Vecchiola Sunshine, we don't just do business here together, people. We do life here together. Yeah. I've heard you say that to some people who were visitors and there's, they, they hang around after the meeting and we ask them, you know, what, what's your takeaway from this? And they're like, wow, I've never, you know, the, I love the energy. I love the breakout. I love the fact that even though you guys are on zoom, there is energy here. And I feel like it's obvious you guys are close or you're tight or you're a family. Right. So we've made them feel that way. Right. And, you know, because we do do life together. Yeah. We had that, uh, that um, I call it a mixer, the kickoff party a couple of weeks ago. It was like a, a family reunion. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, um, it makes those moments when we do get together even sweeter, right? Yeah. Like we have high energy meetings, even on Zoom. And like Rob said, we had a visitor in Brooklyn today and, and you know, she was asked like, hey, what what was your takeaway? And she was like, I just feel good here. Like you guys are really nice and, you know, and, you know, 
It's great to hear that. It's great to hear that people, and they're like, you really care. Like you guys really care yeah. about each other. Yeah. But, and it's sad that they're shocked by that. Right. Like, well, yeah, we do really care yeah. about each other because we're just not looking. We're looking to do life together too, not just business. Yeah. Look at Debbie says, I think Rob, that's her husband, Rob, by the way, not me, but I think Rob just felt jealous of my excitement after the meeting. So he joined me. <laughs> <laughs> he was excited. Yeah. Now, come on. How look, if you've ever been to other networking groups, other organizations, other associations, wherever, you know, it's business, right? Wherever have you gotten excited? Yeah. Being a meeting where somebody else said, Hey, can I come? Because you're so excited after going to this meeting. Nowhere. That's the answer. Only here. Right. And you know, the thing is too, is you'll always see no matter what meeting you go to and in, 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 in our region specifically, I can speak to, there's multiple leaders in the room from other chapters from all around the region it's not just the leaders of that chapter, but there's leaders from all over yeah. the the region. Yeah. Look at Nicole. Hey, Nicole, thank you for coming. Read this. Hey, stuff. Nicole. I love Nicole. Love, yeah. love. She is the pain whisperer, people. So if you need acupuncture, please give Nicole a call. But look what she said. I met a fellow acupuncturist whose success inspired me to create the practice I want. That's major, right? She. To, to create the practice she wanted. That's what the power of inspiration can do. It, again, it goes back to when somebody paints that picture for us, we feel like, hey, if they can do it, I can do it. You know, it's it, it moves you to, like you were saying before, Steph, those limited beliefs that we have about what we can achieve. You see something inspiring, like a movie or something, right? You want to go out. Now you want to take on the world. Yeah, it empowers you, right? Like, empowers. don't... And don't ever give away your power, people. Don't ever give away your power. And if that happens to you, because it does happen to some of us sometimes, take your power back. Yeah, yeah. I love that, uh, the empowerment part of it. I guess it's probably the second part of that. So you get inspired, then you feel empowered. When you feel empowered, you're likely to do something. Right, right. Well, but because then you get like passionate about it, right? You're you're like you see what goes on. You you get inspired, yeah. And then you're like, whoa! And sometimes, oh, we had a song. Debbie, where 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 were you? You weren't the first one on, like usual, <laughs> Deb. I mean, that was like that was like almost three minutes of a song. <laughs> Debbie, where I were know. You? Maybe you should play it again anyway. No, Maybe it'll no. pump up the room. All right. You'll play it again later. Or maybe we'll play it again later. Get them to stick around to the end. It's a good yeah. one, too. It, it is, is a, a really song. good one. And it's gonna it's gonna make you want to dance in your seat or or get up and dance. We don't care. We love I, it. I actually never never heard this song. So some of you know me. I'm like a fanatical country music fan. It's all I listen to, and some people want to throw up when they hear that. That's okay. I, I I just I love it. I love the message. I love I just love everything about it. And Steph said, "Hey, how about this song that we play for the inspiration episode?" And I was like, "Oh, I never heard this." But I, I'm open minded too because I grew I grew up in all kinds of music. I just ended up at country at this stage of my life. But she played it. And I was like, "This song's awesome. <laughs> I love it now. It's great, great song." So maybe you'll hear it later, Debbie. Okay, so you know what? I need to go to my question of the night. I mean, I know I asked you guys about how you guys invite to meetings, but that's not really my question of the night. We're talking about inspiration tonight, right? Mm. So I want to know because most of the people in this room are entrepreneurs. And even if you're an entrepreneur, you're an intrapreneur, you're a solopreneur, whatever you are, I want to know what inspired you to either start your business or what inspired you to do what you're doing today? So please, please put some comments in the chat. And hey, if you have not yet shared this to your Facebook page, please do so. It gives us a longer reach to people outside of just Master Networks so that maybe somebody who's contemplating network, a, a new networking group maybe might hear this and say, hey, I want to be part of those people. They're having a good time. Yeah. We have a good time no matter what. In fact, I just I, I had a first uh, conversation this morning with a group of people who were thinking of starting a, a new chapter down in New Jersey. And, um, you know, it was like almost 10 minutes after the start of the meeting. And it, it's just a discussion. There was no there's no chapter meeting. It's just a bunch of people that I've never met before. 
And um, and you could see they're kind of like we're talking and I'm talking to people and asking where they're from and all this. And you could see some of the people are the look on their face like, when does the meeting start? I said, oh, by the way, the meeting already started. This is it. Like <laughs> we're just hanging. We're talking. We're laughing. I'm like, if we're not, you know, if you don't like laughing, like doing business, I said, it's probably not for you because we right. have a good time. I ain't got to right. laugh. <laughs> yeah, that's important. Listen. We're all here to do business, but that doesn't mean we can't have fun doing it. If you're not having fun doing it, then you're in the wrong business. Whatever you're doing, do something else. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, hey, Karen. How are you doing, Karen? I hope you're oh, healing Karen. well. Oh, Karen. I'm sending Thank lots you. of love to you, girl. Yeah. Um, and and I hope you're recovering well, my friend. Yeah. I like this. Each person brings something to the table. It's up to each of us to tap into that by building a relationship with each of them. Yeah. It's, look at, and look, look at that. she's each sitting. I know something to the table. I love that part. That's Nobody right. Does. And and I know that. Look, she, Karen just had a double knee replacement surgery just a Thanks. couple of weeks ago, and she hasn't stopped. So you know, kudos to you and lots of love to you, honey. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Which message from country music? The pickup truck, the shotgun rack, or girlfriend that dumped you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> or the dog. Wait, where's the dog? The do there's, there's usually a dog in that pickup truck with you. I'm so surprised there's no mention of beer. I mean, come yeah, on, right. Barry. Right. You obviously haven't listened to enough country music. And the funny thing <laughs> is, the funny thing is, I love the songs about the pickup trucks, the racks, the girlfriend that dumped. You know, the beer, the drink. And the funny thing is, I don't have a truck. I don't own a gun. My <laughs> wife, thank God, hasn't dumped me. I don't drink beer, really. But He does have a dog. He yeah. does have the dog, I though. Have a dog. I do have a dog, but she's no hunting dog, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Thanks no, for coming, Barry. She doesn't have to be a hunting dog. She just ha she or he has to just be your pal, right? She like is. so that when all those things do happen to you, you do get dumped. You have yeah. nothing left. You still have your dog. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Daniel's laughing out loud at to Barry's joke. So good. Thank, and you know, you here's the, the thing too, right? I say it all the time. When people enter the room and come into our meetings, I want them to feel like um, it's their animals greeting them at the door, right? Because your animals love you unconditionally. My gosh, I just I just left a little earlier. I guess we're getting off of inspiration a little bit, but I just left earlier to get my son from work. And there was nobody in the house when I left because everybody else is gone. And so I'm driving away and I and I have the big uh, um, bay window in the front of the house. And as I'm driving past my house, I see her looking at me. Yeah, and all watching. I can think about it, is she going, are you coming back? Right, right. It breaks my heart. Breaks right. My heart. Because and then I come back and she's like, oh, thank God you're here. Right, right, right. <laughs> Oh my gosh, so funny. I know. It's so um, true. So, so hey guys, you have in here? I, I'm not seeing anything in the chat about, mm -hmm. you know, what inspired you to do what you're presently doing in your business. Yeah. Come on. We want to want to hear it. What is Jean talking about here? She's got a paragraph. I, I wanted my kids to know that you can follow your passion. I didn't want to regret not taking action and I wanted to model the possible not being stopped by fear or doubt. Plus, I love what I do. To be Ooh, Gene, I love that. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, you know, Steph, um, Gene's going to be doing some of my photos uh, this spring, summer. Hopefully we can get on the calendar. Wanted to do it last year, but uh, <clears throat> ran out of uh, ran out of season. But I know she took your shots. She's taken a lot of people's shots. And, you know, her shots, really, they are inspirational. And they may just be headshots, but they're not really, right? Because... The feeling of the person comes through. Yeah. It's, she knows how to like inspire through photography. She knows how to capture the essence of the people that she photographs, right? So it's not just a photograph. It's like yeah. we talk about Craig Ingberg and he's, you know, he's a cinematographer and, and because he really knows how to capture the story. He doesn't just video. He's a cinematographer. Yeah. He knows how to capture the feeling that you want to feel in, in, in what you're trying to portray, right? What, what, not even portray, what you're trying to express. You, and to be able to do that, Jean does the same thing with her photography. Yeah. 
And I think that's an important thing to understand that, you know, some people might not feel like, well, I can't inspire doing what I'm doing. And I'd say, no, that's not true. Because even if it's not something like photography, and Craig's a great example because, you know, he's done a couple of videos for us for some of our events. And people look at those videos and they're very inspiring videos, inspires people to want to join, to get more involved in Master Networks, so maybe some of our community council or givebacks um, or, or leadership levels. But there's no reason why you can't be inspiring based on maybe some of your life circumstances. If if you're willing to be a little vulnerable and share some of your your setbacks and your obstacles and how you went through them to maybe start that business, to maybe overcome something that where you come to a point where maybe you had a win, not, not that you feel like you arrived and you're this big winner and life is just everything perfect. No, you you have a win. Because life is just a series of wins. You're overcoming. Yeah, and, and right. And we all stumble. None of us are, are, you know, we all trip along the way, right? None of us don't trip or or have stumbling blocks along the way. Oh, yeah. All the time. I'm always tripping. That's and what I, we learn from, right? Fall, you know, I, fail forward is, is I, the fail forward. Right. Fail forward. Maggie said, I couldn't stand seeing people stressing over how to do their social media. Right. So inspired her to shift because she was in different businesses before and doing a lot of different things. And she shifted that focus towards social media. Right. Because you see people struggling and you want to help. So you inspire them to get over this thing, to help them so that they can move forward. So we all do it in different ways. Right. Yeah. No. Look at this. Sandra said, my psychic medium told my psychic medium friend told me to do Reiki. So there's right. an inspirer right there. We, we draw inspiration from everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And I get inspired by a lot of the people that are in this chat right now, right? You guys inspire me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, keep putting your stories in there. I mean, what Debbie says, starting a business was totally not my idea. I quickly saw that success was possible and quickly joined in on the fun. The reluctant business owner. Yep. We don't think we can. Limiting belief. Yeah. Oh, business ownership is not for me. Limiting belief. And then we see somebody, right? Again, with some of the comments in the chat, somebody else, somebody else has struggled. Somebody and they else do it, overcoming. right? And they overcome it. And then you're like, oh, well, if they can do it, maybe I can too, yeah. right? I, yeah, and that's why I teach people, look, tell your story. It's the most powerful thing you can do in order to help connect yourself with people connect your business. I tell my story all the time. And look, when I look at my story, I don't see it as so inspirational. But the fact is when people see that you overcame and you made a decision and it's come to this, this kind of this win, um, they are inspired by it. They are encouraged by it. They are connected to it. Right. Right. At the very least. Right. Absolutely. I, I agree with you. It, it's, it's, um, it's engaging when you start to listen to someone's story, right? It captures people because look, people, we're all people, right? Yeah. So um, it's a great way to connect with people and have a deeper understanding of who they are. Yeah. 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 And Chris, we all have a story. Chris says there's no losing, only winning and learning. I like that. I like that tip. Right. You can't lose if you learn because <laughs> then you win. Right. That's awesome, Chris. Chris is great. Chris has got a lot of wisdom. Yeah. He's a little subdued yeah. sometimes, but when he comes out with stuff, it's like, well, I think Chris is awesome. Yeah. I think he rocks. <laughs> He's <And> crystal. <laughs> I had no business background. <laughs> Laugh out loud. <laughs> that's the, well, I think that's one of the ultimate in guts to venture out in business, which by the way, the average person respects business owners if they have a job because they think it's too difficult or it's only for certain people. So they're, they're in awe by people who start their own business. And a lot of people that start their own business didn't necessarily believe in themselves at first either, but they just did it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. Well, Tina stories, sell and facts tell. Oh, there yeah. you go. Boom. That's like a mic drop. Wow. I never heard you say that before, Tina. That's really yeah, good. Yeah. I stories like that. Sell and facts tell. <laughs> I great. like that. That's great. Well, guess what time it is? 
731. So, okay, before we bring our special guest on tonight, I want to see who you guys think our special guest is for tonight. Oh, yeah. Let's hear some guesses. Let's hear some guesses. Start putting them in the chat. Who do you think that surprise guest is? Um, uh, This person has a great, inspiring story. And look, a lot of people have great, inspiring stories. Um, But when I had a face-to-face, man, I was like, I've done nothing (laughs) in my life. (laughs) I know. Right? Dean. Gene Terman could be this person. Be Gene Terman. This person has um, is amazing. Yeah, um, but Look, all Gene's of you are amazing, story. right? So I think a- Barry's got a great story. <clears throat> yes, Daniel says it has to be Barry. Could be Barry does have a great story. Um, yeah, so it could be could be Barry. Mike Granieri, man, it could be. If you have not had a face to face with Mister Mike Granieri, man, that dude has got some overcoming story. Big he's time. Such, he's such a great guy. And and yeah, you never know it, like because he's just it's great. He's a great guy. So these are all good guesses. So it could be any one of these, uh, but we should bring the person on soon because we don't want to cut into their yeah, I know we really don't want to cut into their time. So I say, um, hurry, hurry. Okay, we're gonna bring this person on now. So I gotta remove the frame because it always gets in the way. And I'm gonna bring them in. So any last minute. Guesses, Elise says, Rich Ace. Eight. Rich, rich is that, human. Is the human? Yeah, Rich human. Oh, that could that be. would be a good could one. Be. That would well, let's have a drum roll, one. please. Can we have a drum roll in the chat? All right, come on, people. Drum roll. Drum roll. All right, here we go. Welcome to Build It Through Culture Live. It's Crystal Barrow. Woo, woo, hey, Crystal. Woo. Hi, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming, Crystal. Nobody got the surprise guest, guest, guess. But you were certainly a surprise because when they hear some of the stuff that you've done in your life, and I know when we talked, Crystal, I was like, what? I had nothing to say. Nothing to say. (laughs) Tell everybody who you are and what you do first, Crystal, and then we'll get into that conversation. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me here. I'm very, very excited. My name is Crystal Barrow. For those who don't know me, I am a career coach. I am the founder and owner of Shape Your Success Coaching, and I'm helping prominent professional women navigate their next career move. So it's getting clarity and focus around what they want to do. It might involve a job search. It might be a transition to a totally new career, or perhaps it's just advancement right where they are, and they actually like their boss and like their job. (laughs) And so I'm helping them navigate that path and that journey, and I'm honored to do so. I do that right here from White Plains, New York. And when I can, I visit groups and talk to people to share my message that you should be doing work you love. Yeah. Thank you so much, Crystal. And and it's, oh, and and it's so perfect to have Crystal on tonight because it is Women's History Month this month, right? So, yeah. And talking about how you help women, navigate it's like awesome right so i just think it's so fitting and you are an inspiration to so many people oh yeah. well thank you thank you i mean that's the goal i never i'm never quite sure whether it's happening or not but that is the goal so i appreciate you and um yeah i'm excited to tell share more about inspiration and kind of my path a little bit yeah, so why don't you share some of your stories? Start back wherever you feel you need to start back from. I mean, I know we only had like uh, 30 or 40 minutes together. And in that short time, you told me some of the things you've overcome and accomplished and aspired to and, you know, made them happen. And uh, it obviously wasn't easy at times, right? There was some mm-hmm. obstacles. But, but tell us a bit about your journey. We want to hear it. Everybody wants to hear. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So... Um, Long story short, I am a former federal law enforcement officer right out of college. I went to work for the Department of Justice, Immigration and Naturalization Service at the time. And I was, um, for five years, I was working with uh, employer sanctions. So we were looking at employers who were treating undocumented immigrants unfairly, to say the least. And then after that, during that period of time, unfortunately, we had the attacks on the World Trade Center, 9-11 happen. And um, I had also just, my goal was to go to law school and become an attorney. And I was 
was going to law school at Pace in White Plains at night. I was a law enforcement agent nine to five during the day. And at 9-11, during 9-11, I had to report uh, 12 hour shifts, sometimes more in New York City, right, to, res to respond. So I had to make a very difficult decision because in my first year of law school, that was the goal. It took me everything I had out of me to get into law school. I did decide to resign shortly thereafter. And I went from evening student to full-time day student um, to become an attorney. So I'm also a former practicing attorney. You'll hear more about what happened with that. <laughs> and then um, after that, so I did complete law school. I've been an assistant district attorney in Bronx County. Woo woo, any Bronxites <laughs> out there? I'm born and raised in the Bronx, living in White Plains for about 22 years now. Um, but I was serving my Bronx community. And then I also worked as um, an attorney for the New York City Department of Education. And there I did administrative trials involving misconduct by principals, teachers, et cetera. So very interesting mm -hmm. for, for several years down in Manhattan. And then I, the, I moved from there to worked for the New York State Attorney General at the time, who was Eric Schneiderman. And I was a prosecutor uh, in the Medicaid Fraud Control Unit. So another very interesting job talk where we um, investigated doctors, pharmacists, et cetera, who were um, illegally selling prescriptions, narcotics, things like that. So very interesting work. But, and here's where that inspiration comes in. I felt a tug to do something different. I had been feeling a tug all along, I would say for a couple of years. Um, so I began a side hustle, which was Shape Your Success Coaching. And um, I also was setting up meeting groups, um, meetup groups for women who just wanted to get together and talk about goals and how we could achieve them. And it was during a mixer, actually, that someone said, you know, you're coaching, you'd be a great coach. And I was like, uh, I don't know what a coach is. <laughs> I appreciate that, but what is that? And um, she introduced me to IPEC and the world of coaching. And I completed that program. It was life altering personally and professionally. And then um, I kept the side business. I kept the side gig for a bit. And then um, three years ago, fast forward, um, well, let me back up a little bit because this is germane to my journey also. So during the time that I was working at the AG's office, an opportunity presented itself to work as an assistant dean. And I said, wow, this is right in alignment with career coaching. It was running the Career Development Center. This is great. I've made it to the big time, this managerial role. I'm going, I'm gone. Let's go. Let's do it. This is a, a sign for all my sign people out there, right? And I went. And about six to eight months later, eh, not a good sign. <laughs> and so if you know the work world of academia, it, it can be very, you know, when a new administration, it's like politics, a new administration comes in, lots of changes. And I was one that was let go unexpectedly um, mm -hmm. shortly thereafter. And so I um, went back, had the opportunity, right? Burn no bridges, burn no bridges, had the opportunity to go back for a couple of years. But during that time, I really started building the side hustle as well. Felt the tug even more because of what I had been through, job mm -hmm. loss, unexpected job loss, how to bounce back, how to, how to go from derailed to empowered, which was later the book that I wrote about my journey. And I said, you know, it's time. So three years ago, I left the practice of law to build this business, Shape Your Success Coaching. Also during that time, interesting, fun fact to say the least, I became a single mom by choice at the age of, I guess, 42. My daughter Mia is five now. She'll be six this mm -hmm. May. And so there you have it. <laughs> So leaps and bounds. And she's so just Crystal, getting started. Right. She really is. And Crystal, can you tell everybody where they can find your book? Yes. It's available on Amazon. It's a quick read. It, it did land number one bestseller in the career space for a short time. So I was very excited about that. But most importantly, it's on Amazon. It's called Get Your Career Back on Track. 
the eight steps to go from derailed to empowered. And it was really just me telling my story. It was just me sharing the steps that I realized I had taken to bounce back um, and sort of it really was the catalyst and propelled me to do for this next phase. Cause I loved the work that I was doing. I'll be a prosecutor um, at heart forever, but there was this tug to do something different, something bigger. And I took a leap of faith to do it. So thank you for asking that. Please check it out and leave a review. That's the best support that I could get. It's a yeah. quick read. I know I never read, it's self-published. I never wrote a book before. Never knew that I would write wow. a book for all those people out there. I wrote it in three months with the help of some people and just got it out there. And it was one of the greatest achievements for me because now even clients, friends, colleagues, they get to see that I also practice what I preach. Right. Yeah. Wow. I, I want to go back to something you said earlier, because you said it about two or three times throughout your journey. You said, I felt the tug. Now, what is the tug? What, what did you feel? There was something in there that was aside from what you were doing, but you felt this tug to do something else. What was that? Yeah, you know, honestly, Rob, thanks for this question. It is really, it's sort of difficult to explain, but you know if you've experienced a tug and share share in the comments if you know this tug that I'm talking about. It's hard to quantify it, but it's a it's a desire, a knowing. It becomes a knowing. It starts as a whisper. And it starts as maybe someone saying something, but then you hear it over and over again. This was for me, it was over the course of years. And it really, not to be airy-fairy, but to be airy-fairy, it showed up in dreams. It showed up, it, it was just like this, this thing at the back of my mind. It was something I was doing naturally in conversations, helping people with their interview questions or, you know, this one's about to leave the job and we're having chit-chat over the desk, but they would come and tell me that I, my information was helpful or share with me how far they were going with their career move. And, and one day someone did say to me, you know, you could have a business doing this. And again, a business, I'm a, I'm a lawyer. I don't do numbers, <laughs> put me in court. That's what I know. Law and order, the practice. I'm dating myself too, right? All those shows. <laughs> well, it's those limiting beliefs, right? That we were just talking about that, those limiting beliefs. And hold you back. And that was for me, even after I started the business, after I got the coaching certification, um, it still took me three to four years of fear and, oh, I have to have the business cards. Oh, I don't have the perfect website, all these things. <laughs> and when I look back, I remember now, uh, hello, the first client that I had, I can't remember how it happened. That part, it's a blur. However, I do remember that night calling up someone and saying, I, I have a client, how do, how do they pay me? And they said, girl, PayPal, just, <laughs> this <is> the <laughs> and it was on from there. <laughs> you know, it's those details that we get hung up on too. It's like, well, I wouldn't know how to register a business or how I would get paid, like things like that. The, yes. the things that, you know, I, I heard a, a guy say a long time ago, there was so much wisdom in this. And he said, you know, when people are thinking about doing something, so in their mind, it's like, you know, when you run through the forest, you don't run into a tree. You trip over the twigs. Mm. You get so hung up on little details that may have not even happened yet. And it stops you. So you stop running. You don't do any of that stuff. And you you already stop yourself from um, from moving forward long before you even thought about taking the first step. But you Absolutely. haven't done that. What, right. What that propelled you forward, though? Because, you know, going from corrections officer, prosecuting attorney, business owner, single mom, like these are scary <laughs> things. <laughs> the average person. <laughs> yeah. Scary in that these are big endeavors. These are big undertakings. Big change. Yeah. What, yeah. What, what inside you said, I can do this? Yeah. So let me, let me share something with you. It's going to answer your question too. And I'm going to put my old lady glasses on for a second. Oh, no. oh I love your glasses. Mine oh, are similar. <laughs> CVS, CVS. <laughs> okay. So 
I'm also a Googler, <clears throat> right? So I looked up because I'm thinking I'm like motivation, inspiration. So I'd love to see and hear, look back in the comments too. If, what do you know the difference between motivation and inspiration? Ooh. Ooh. And Woo. Woo. Hey, <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> hi. And she so is your motivation. Right? And, what, and, what, and what happened is when you guys were talking, right? Because I'm behind the scenes. They hear you saying it's going to be a surprise guest. And I'm just basically telling her, do you need anything? Do you need anything? Time is almost up. Time is almost up. <laughs> and so when you said that, she said, mommy, is that you? <laughs> I said, yeah. Really? That's, that's, that's that's the there you go. Yeah, she's mommy beautiful. Partner. Thank you. Thank you. So that's cute. my heart. So motivation. And I hope you guys are guessing in the comments. If not, yeah, here guys, it is. Yeah, guys, we're putting it in the comments. Please. Okay. Let's see who's got it. Motivation. Because this was new for me, too. Motivation is the stimulation of any emotion or desire operating upon one's will and promoting or driving it in driving it to action. It involves an outside force, tends to be short term. Inspiration is the process of being mentally stimulated to do or feel something, especially to do something creative. It comes from within mm. and it yeah, tends deep, to deep. be long term. Yeah, deep, deep. Oh my gosh, that was mind blowing for me. Okay, mind yeah. blowing. Yeah. So, when I thought about this, I'm like, because people ask all the time, who are you? Who inspires you? Who are you inspired by? That had me thinking because inspiration comes from inside, according to this. And when you think about if you've gone to listen to a motivational speaker, for example, like mm -hmm. I went to see Lisa Nichols, I'm always leaving there or during the talk, I'm like, man, this is so good. Yeah, yeah. But there's this, you, what you remember is not just what the person has said, but how you feel inside yeah. that pushes you to move versus motivation, which is a feeling that comes and goes just like our emotions, right? We get happy, we get sad. Motivation comes and goes. How many times, oh, I'm not motivated to go to the gym this week, but next week I'm motivated to go to the gym. So it's <laughs> fleeting, it's yeah. fleeting, right? Like our emotions. Right. And so what is required therefore when we have motivation, which is so fleeting, it's what it's supposed to do. We need discipline. We need discipline. Mm -hmm. So it's a longer way, Rob, of, of answering your question because what motivated me, what, what motivates me because it's fleeting is this inspiration from inside to spread my message, to have a global brand, to reach others, have impact on others' lives when it comes to their careers and what they do, how they spend their time, how they work, how they work with people, how they show up for their own career and show up for their own lives. So it's really an inside thing. And, and, and it wavers. My why is really strong. So some, so it keeps me going when the motivation is less during the times that the motivation is less, yeah. but my inspiration on the inside says, what is it you're trying to achieve? Why are you trying to achieve it? Get up and go. And that's long term because it's been three years since leaving my nine to five and those lawyer paychecks. So it's yeah. definitely something stronger than motivation. Does that make sense? Wow. That Absolutely. is fantastic that you defined them and, and clarified the differences because, you know, motivation, we all know sometimes we're motivated and sometimes we're not. And sometimes we're waiting for motivation. Yes. Yeah, for others. Like sometimes example. we wait for other people to, right? To like motivate you, us, right? You reference the gym, <laughs> right? And it's like, oh, well, I'll go walking if you go with me, right? Yes. Or I'll right. meet you at the gym. I'll go work out with you as long as we do it together. Exactly. And we can motivate each other in that. Mm -hmm, way, right? mm -hmm. Exactly. That, that feeling of waiting for the feeling to strike you. And now it doesn't didn't strike me now, so I'm not gonna go. Right. And when you when you talked about inspiration being long term, I'm about long term everything. Yeah. Long term money. I want long term. Yes. Profit. I want long term business. I want long term health and fitness. <laughs> and the inspiration part, we really hit me when you said how it is long term and it comes from a within. And it was three years ago, and you still have it. 
and and it goes to um, something that how you want to make an impact. Yeah. And I immediately thought about when I started my business seven years ago, I wanted to make an impact in people's lives through business. And it was a different company back then. And the thing that brought me to branch strategy and out of website design was the strategy impacted the business directly and made a difference. So uh -huh. I would picture this business owner's family that they may or not have had as getting better as a result of their business getting better. And so I had a help. I had a hand in that. Yeah. And then when yeah. I started Master Networks, you know, I wasn't going to do this at a regional level. I was not. I told my mm -hmm. wife, well, I said, I'm not going to be a regional director. It's not something I'm interested in doing. But see, here's what happened was it fulfilled my purpose that inspired me to do something in the first place because I saw that it was making an impact in people's lives. And I said, I have to do this. Right. And, and so the inspiration, you, I love that. It is long term. I'm, mm -hmm. How am I motivated every day? Because I'm inspired every day. Exactly, exactly. And done, and then add that next level piece of the discipline, right? And so that's where accountability can come in, right? That's where um, we, we create new habits. And so while our motivation can wane here and there, if we have the inspiration that keeps us going, but now we, we focus and we commit to discipline, that is, the, I think, unlocks the key. And for me, it's a work in progress because it's the discipline that that gives you your foundation, gives you long term, right? Gives you all those things. If you can be the most disciplined people, if you think about it, all some of the most successful people, they get up a certain time, they're very organized, it, you know, right? There are certain yeah. things that it comes down to discipline. And one of my favorites, she can be a little airy fairy too sometimes, but I love Mel Robbins. And there's this great like Instagram reel and she's like, no one's coming to rescue you. And she gives like five different things that you want to do that everyone can relate to. And she's like, no one's coming to tell you to turn the TV off. Mm. No one's coming to tell you to put your clothes on and go to the gym. No. And she goes on for a little bit. It's a reel, right? So it's short. Okay. But I was like, oh, shoot. Yeah. No, no one's, no one's coming. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So it, right. So it all Very. comes back to the inside. But we can have our accountability buddies, right? To help right. Us Absolutely. <laughs> That's so, support. Crystal, can you tell everybody how they can get in touch with you? Because we're getting ready to wrap up here, but I want everybody to be able to know how to get in touch with you. Um, you. So, yes. if you could share with them. Yes, thank you so much. So, I do have a Facebook business page, Shape Your Success Coaching. I'm on Facebook um, well, pretty often and also on LinkedIn. So, if you're on LinkedIn, definitely connect with me. I do most of my work there. And my website is www.shapeyoursuccesscoaching.com. I'm getting used to Twitter and Instagram, so bear with me. But uh, find me wherever. Just reach out and happy to do a face to face or happy to just chat and, and encourage and support you. And awesome. know everybody that Crystal is the vice president of the Brooklyn chapter. So if ever you're looking in the hub, you can find her. She is the VP for the Brooklyn chapter as well. Rachel, yeah. thank you so much. You are truly an inspiration. And I want to thank you for your service um, to the community during 9-11 and just, just for all that you've done. Um, and now's your time to shine. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, Thank, the you, so much, Thank, Thank you for spending you. Thank this you. time with us. Thank you for being inspirational and for sharing some great learning points for us because I love learning about stuff. And everybody, shapeyoursuccesscoaching.com. It's in the ticker across the bottom. Go to our website. Go, go to LinkedIn. Connect with Crystal because obviously you got a little piece of what she can do for you in your mm -hmm. life and your business. And so I'm sure she, when she gives you both barrels... <laughs> I'm sure yeah. she's going to make great change. You're, okay. Yeah, you're going to be you so, much, guys. so fortunate. This All means right. a lot. Thank you. And I'm happy you got to meet Mia. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So All bye, right. Mia. Have a good bye, night. Mia. Was, bye, Crystal. It was a pleasure bye. meeting you. Take care. Bye, Crystal. Wow. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Right? Awesome. She's awesome. awesome. She's awesome. I just have such mad respect for her. She yeah. really is. Um, she really does inspire me. You know, you hear her story and how can you not be inspired by that? I just, it's just amazing to me. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and this is what we look to do. We look to bring in people who will embody the episode's, um, you know, um, subject matter topic um, because we believe that everybody has something to offer. So we always want to bring somebody new on here and usually somebody who doesn't get a lot of visibility. Right. right? That's what Steph and right. I decided. So we know we could bring on so many leaders who you've heard of in Master Networks or, uh, you know, or, or in your business community. Um, but we really want to give people who don't typically have a lot of visibility a platform and a voice uh, because, look, Tina Campbell taught me a long time ago, by by her actions, you raise people up. Yeah. You did that for me, and I, I look forward to doing that to a lot of people. Yeah, and we want, we want to listen, and <laughs> we just love each other, right? Like, And we want to just share that with everybody. And when you... When people inspire you, you want to share that and be like, hey, you know, like Rob said, he had a 30, 40 minute face to face with Crystal. I had a I think it was an hour, but, you know, it, she's just inspiring. Right? right. And there's a lot of people like that. And that's why these face to faces are the secret sauce. That's why they're so important. It's important for us to share our story. It's ditch the pitch, right? This isn't just yeah. about business. Share your story. Let people know who you are as a human, just as a person. And it's helpful. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, like always, uh, you know, you're watching this on the Mass Networks Inc. Facebook page, but make sure you have liked the page uh, because there's more great content coming in, not just us, but I know there's some great stuff. Uh, something earlier today was on the page that you can check out. But it's going to be more and more coming. So you're going to want to be in, you know, notified when stuff like this happens, because this is really stuff you can use. And, and, you know, look, if you had a good time here, make sure you're spreading the word about this, because, look, sometimes you just need to blow off a little steam. You need to hang out. You need to laugh and you need to be heard. And we want to make sure that we have your voice get heard here. Uh, yeah. the next episode, April episode 12 on April 7th, April 7th. April yeah. 7th, guys. Yeah, so put that on your calendar. We're going to go live at 7 p.m. on April 7th. A uh, topic, well, we know what the topic is, but you won't know what it is yet, but it will come out and you will be aware of that. So That's make sure right. You do that. So I think you, what do you want to do? Your, your thank yous? Do we have some thank yous? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, always thank yous. So, you know, listen, Renee Pride, who gave us this platform to use. So I want to give a big shout out to Renee. Um, of course, Chaz for starting this networking group to begin with, right? Yeah. And of course, our amazing Tina Campbell, who has been a mentor to both of us. So um, thank you to all of them. Um, without them, we wouldn't be here right now. So um, we really appreciate you guys. And um, crank up that song, Rob. I think everybody needs to move a little in their chair. Yeah. If you've never heard this song. If you've ever heard it. Get moving. <laughs> that's great we do want to thank all of you for coming for sure because this doesn't work as well without all of you coming participating we know you're taking time out of your evening maybe away from your family for a little bit um so we definitely appreciate that we don't take that for granted so but come back every two weeks we're here every two weeks um join in the fun with us um if you have questions about any of this culture stuff you know, you can reach out to me and Steph will help you walk through some of this stuff because she and I dissect this stuff and we're applying it in everything we're doing, which is why we're able to get some results. So I want to thank everybody for coming. Have a great night. We'll see you next time. And go spread love wherever you go. Make sure you're spreading love, people. We'll see you two weeks from tonight. Right. April Bye, 7th. everybody. Bye, Good night. Oh, we didn't ask him what the song was. Hmm. Hey, if you know the song, put it in there. Do you know yeah, the song? Yeah, before we leave, if you know the song, put it in the chat. Yeah. I never heard this before. This is so cool. <laughs> Anybody got a guess? Come on, Debbie. I bet you Debbie's got a guess. Jean's <laughs> got a guess. No guesses. No guesses? Maybe they hopped off. <laughs> Could be. Could be. Well, if you're still there... Have a great night. Thank you for coming. We're Thanks, signing off. Bye-bye now. Bye.